Blessings, beloveds. Welcome back. I just want to have a little quick look-see into the Saturn-Mars square. It's a pretty intense combination and a pretty challenging combination, but also it has tremendous ability in a number of different ways. It might be a very frustrating type of energy, but relative to being able to work through things, uh, there's a lot of potential there for that. But I guess the first thing is this, right? I had a quick look at it. And what's been happening is that the Mars-Saturn square started with a conjunction in the sign of Aquarius back in April of 2020, right? So it was quite some time ago. Um, <clears throat> what happened was Saturn actually went retrograde. So from Aquarius, it went back into Capricorn and as Mars proceeded forward, they caught up together in a square actually in the signs of Aries and Capricorn. So we had this unusual uh, interjection of another aspect, which is a little bit unusual because generally speaking, you'll have two planets that will come together. They form a conjunction, right, which is the birth of something new, the beginning, a new cycle. Uh, it's all about you know, numerous possibilities. There's so many possibilities actually with a conjunction. You don't know what it's going to be until the full cycle completes. So the cycle that we are in now relative to Mars and Saturn being square each other, as I said, started in April of 2020. In August of 2020, we had Mars and Saturn squaring each other in the previous signs, that is Capricorn and Aries, and then they proceeded forward and then in January of this year they formed their first quarter square okay in the signs of uh, where are we Taurus and Aquarius so Mars was in Taurus Saturn was in Aquarius then in July of this year they formed their opposition so this is a cycle now unfolding okay and now in November on November the 11th Mars and Saturn came to be together in what's called the last quarter square, right? So you've probably heard that Mars and Saturn are squaring each other. But the, the thing is to look at, well, where did this cycle begin? And it began in the sign of Aquarius, okay? Um, <clears throat> so where are we now in this cycle? We're, we're at a position where we have to rethink reevaluate, revise, perhaps turn away from, let go of things. It's a, it's, a, it's a cycle that corresponds to whatever you started, for instance, back in April of 2020 relative to Mars and Saturn um, <clears throat> actions in your life. You're now at a place where you are rethinking it all, right? So the last quarter square is typically known as the crisis in consciousness but another way to put it would be to say crisis in thinking and again although the word crisis can be a little bit uncomfortable it doesn't have to be necessarily crisis as in you know severe crisis in your life but it is a challenging time because it is speaking to whatever you started back in april 2020 you are now rethinking the components of what was built, what was created, what wasn't created, what, what you struggled with, what you've been challenging with, and now you are in a process of rethinking about all of that. But go back to the start, which was in April 2020, have a look at where that conjunction occurred, the Mars-Saturn conjunction in Aquarius. So wherever, I think it was around about one degrees of Aquarius, Saturn and Mars were together. That's the new cycle they began. And so whatever got going at that point and whatever you sort of uh, reached, well, when, let me just reframe that. It started in April 2020. And then because Saturn went retrograde, we, we had this sort of it, it, almost like a gap, right? Because uh, it normally wouldn't take that long for the first quarter square to appear, but it, it actually took a year because Saturn went retrograde. So we've had like all of 2020 where a new cycle began with Mars and Saturn, but because it went retrograde, there was a, 
another square that occurred between Mars and Saturn in Aries and Capricorn, as I said, but then the first quarter square relative to that new cycle beginning in Aquarius actually occurred in January of 2021. Now, the first quarter square is basically corresponding to deciding, uh, acting and building. So if the new conjunction, new seed is about intending to project forward a new cycle, new course of action, new things you you want to create and do. So it's the implementing of the the seeds, the thoughts around that. And then the first quarter square, which didn't take place till a year later, which was the beginning of 2021, that was the point in time where you were able to actually act on things. Uh, It's it's a very, all square aspects are very, very dynamic, but the first quarter square is literally about putting that action out there, right? really taking that course of action which might have presented in conflicting ways it might have brought up some some uh, challenges from the external environment from the situations that were going on in your life but it's it's a crisis in action right first quarter square so there's crisis revolved around that because you're trying to actually do something you're trying to step forward into something you're trying to push ahead into something and it's there's there's crisis around that it's not necessarily easy but it's very dynamic and with mars we know that mars has an incredibly strong will now saturn always brings up the barriers the limitations the frustrations and things that you'd have to work through in order to get that mars to get those wheels really going and activated so by the time we hit july in 2021 mars and saturn were actually opposite each other right so during the opposition that would have been the time of basically illumination uh fulfillment culmination and awareness being able to see actually what began for you relative to mars saturn signatures themes in your life uh that started back in april of 2020 and now we're at this point of the last quarter square which is about reevaluating turning away from things, revising, rethinking. It's a crisis in thinking. So this is not really the phase that corresponds to external action. That was the first quarter phase, right, which was at the beginning of this year. Now we're at a point where we are actually having to have to rethink the whole thing of what started for us in April of 2021. Um, So actually, Let me just uh, make a few comments here from this book. I I really like this uh, book. It's a fairly new investment for me, but I I like the way this person describes things. So here's some words for Mars Saturn. Okay, now Mars Saturn in traditional astrology are considered to be the two malefic planets, right? And that just simply means that they are the more difficult energies that we uh, basically are working with on an everyday basis. Mars is a very personal planet. And while Saturn is a social planet, it also corresponds to the structure of our reality, whatever, however we structure that, whatever our perception is, that's basically what Saturn corresponds to. Um, It's also the planet that gives us the ability to be disciplined, to be determined, to be patient, to work on things right it's it saturn is the ultimate teacher really because <laughs> we're living in a third dimension reality so no matter how spiritualized we may feel or think we are or how evolved we think we are or how aware we think we are we're still dealing with a third dimension reality so we have to navigate our way through this reality through saturn as well right but i think um the key with Saturn, and I've said this many, many times, is really about understanding our own inner authority, right? When Saturn is operating at a pretty healthy level in our lives, it's basically because we have integrated that energy and we have become our own authority by taking responsibility for our own life, as opposed to projecting the Saturn outside of ourselves and just being um, bombarded by the nature of uh saturn's harsh reality right um so 
Mars Saturn combinations, there can be a lot of frustration there because Mars is the energy that propels us forward, that pushes us uh, out there in terms of our actions, our goals, our passions, our desires. It has very strong instincts, but with Saturn there with it, we we can't just ignore the Saturn and, and do the Mars thing. We have to work with them together. So it can be a very frustrating and challenging energy. And it just means that your what you are trying to create, what you are trying to act on, defend, fight for, and so forth, you have to do it with Saturn's uh, frequency, Saturn's energy. So it, it can be, it's often sometimes described as if, if you can imagine being in the car and having, you know, it's it's like a push pull, push pull, push pull. You know, you've got Mars is pushing and Saturn is is pulling back, right? So there's this contraction and retraction going on. So it can be a very very frustrating process, and especially because Mars can get very very angry um, when it uh, when it feels inhibited or suppressed or stopped, which is what Saturn will actually do. But it's really about recognizing what Saturn is trying to teach us through this process around our willpower, our will desires, and what we are trying to create and co-create. Um, so Mars Saturn energy, focus and disciplined action, deliberate and determined outputs of energy, qualities of hard work and persistence, the capacity to complete projects, uh, active forbearance, uh, oppressive work reg regimes, uh, inhibited or frustrated energies, a tendency to feel like a victim while acting as a perpetrator, ongoing bitterness and hate, harsh boundary collisions. Now that sounds all pretty, it's pretty negative mostly, right? Except for the first part where it talked about disciplined action, um, deliberate and determined outputs of energy. Uh, the, the ability to be really persistent. I mean, that's that's the beauty of Saturn and Mars together. There's this sense of being really persistent with what you are trying to push through and create. But you just, you can't bypass Saturn, you know. You can't, um, <laughs> you just can't bypass it. You have to learn to work with it. So some other things he says, um, qualities of hard work and persistence, deliberate and determined outputs of energy, urges to test one's metal and put one's nose to the grindstone, an ability to confront challenges head on, steady perseverance despite problems, instincts to proceed slowly and carefully. So the instincts part is Mars and the proceeding slowly and carefully is Saturn. So in essence, there can be a really good um, outcome that can come out of these energies together, provided you can integrate them and work with them together. Typically what can happen though, there can be an incredible sense of frustration and anger because Mars is, it, it feels like it's boxed in, right, by Saturn. Now Saturn rules walls, corners, chains, you know, things that hold us back. So it, if we are, if we're not working with, with Saturn's lessons, let's say, then the Mars is just continuously trying to push and it's 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 pushing forward and then it's 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 getting a, a slap to the head, you know, it's it's getting a pushback. And when there's this um, inability to understand what Saturn is trying to teach us, then we're just left with this uh, very intense anger and frustration, which can be internalized and it can be projected as well, which then can lead to, you know, conflict with authority, Saturn, right, relative to our own willpower, what we desire, what we want to do, the passion that we have about a particular um, situation or project or person or whatever it may be. So again, the lesson with Saturn is learning our limitations that because Saturn is limitation. So with a Saturn Mars combination, there are some limitations that will be posed. So it's not about not being able to do what you want to do, but it's about how do I do this with the teachings of Saturn? What is Saturn really trying to teach me through this process? So I, you have to put the brakes on, you know, you can't just go full speed, which is what Mars would like to do. Now, this is a very intense last quarter square because Mars is in Scorpio. So the feelings 
that are coming through with this Mars and Scorpio um, are really coming through the soul component of us. They're, they're very, very deep feelings and they can be very deep feelings of frustration because of Saturn. And it is an inner internal process with the last quarter square because it's a reevaluating and rethinking of a journey that begun for us with the Saturn Mars conjunction back in April 2020. So I just wanted to quickly jump on and just share that and get you um, thinking about this Mars square Saturn, which is in play at the moment, and it's only in play for a few days. But the the key to understanding what it's bringing up for you now is looking back to when that cycle began, which was in April 2020. That's that's the key, really going back to that time and having a look through your life <clears throat> and seeing where the first quarter square took place as well, which was in January 2021. Mars was in uh, Saturn, uh, Mars was in Taurus, Saturn was in Aquarius. Then in July this year, they were opposite each other. So you were able to get a, a pretty clear kind of uh, perspective and level of awareness of where you're at with this Mars Saturn cycle. And again, I mean, you, you, most of you understand what Mars means, what Saturn means. So it's really about looking at it relative to your own birth chart. Where did the conjunction occur? Where did the first quarter square occur? Where did the opposition occur in, in terms of the houses of your birth chart? Where is the last quarter square at the moment? So the houses that it's in, those are the, the domains, the areas of life where this energy is being completely amplified, right, and activated. So that this is the way to think about this cycle, not just as an isolated event relative to, you know, 10th, 11th, 12th of November, <clears throat> where this Mars square Saturn is, you know, quite activated, right? Um, so just very, very quickly, and I have to go because I have an appointment to attend to. So here is the chart for today, 12th of November. Uh, you can see the square between Mars and Saturn. So Mars today is at eight. So the exactness was actually yesterday, which was the 11th of November <clears throat> for us in the Southern Hemisphere. And, you know, obviously you need to adjust it to your location. So it's still in play today as we speak. And, you know, if I step forward, it, it'll still be active really tomorrow as well. And it would have been active a couple of days ago. So if it's just a few days, a, a window of a few days where this energy is really, really intense. But again, like I said, these two started this whole relationship when they formed their conjunction back in April 2020. So it is worth looking at where it started in your chart, as I said, where it had its first quarter square. Basically, Saturn will more or less be in the same place, right? Because Saturn moves very slowly compared to Mars, especially. But Mars will be flying around your chart, basically, right? So with the conjunction, it would have started in Aquarius, right? In your Aquarian house. Then the first quarter square would have led Mars to where Taurus is in your chart. Um, then the opposition would have led to where Mars was in Leo. So when Mars was in Leo, it was opposite Saturn. So wherever Leo is in your chart, that's where Mars was creating the opposition to Saturn. And now the last quarter square is wherever Scorpio is in your chart, that's where Mars is creating his last quarter square. So it's, a, it's quite a dynamic, tense sort of energy, but more so from thinking about and reevaluating everything that's been going on in terms of your your projects, um, structure of reality, your goals, desires, and things you've been trying to act on. Um, it's not an easy energy, but like I said, it really does help us persist and push through things. And also at this last quarter square phase, it helps us recognize what we actually need to maybe just walk away from because it's it's not working. It's not working in the way that we thought. It's not worth it. It's, you know, it's it's a revision, revaluation, rethinking, crisis in thinking. It's it's really just processing all of that and, and subsequently making decisions um, around what you, you know, just need to move away from. And then actually, very interestingly enough, in 2022, because Saturn will uh, still be in Aquarius, 
we're going to have another cycle of Mars Saturn conjunction in the sign of Aquarius again, actually. So that's quite interesting, right? Um, but that's further down the track. That's in April of 2022. Um, okay, that's really all I wanted to say. I just uh, felt compelled to just jump on and speak about this very briefly um, because I know it's a very dynamic energy that uh, it's certainly representing matters in the collective, right? Uh, and, you know, it is it is uh, highlighting the, the backdrop of the the narrative that's playing out we've also had mars and um and mercury conjunct as well the last few days and that's uh that's been a very interesting energy and that's been uh potentially a very amplified um uh, vocalized level of words it can be very uh, angry words it can be um attacking it can be um spiteful words you know it's <laughs> it's a really really uh intense um you know it's it's the 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 tongue that stings with its words you know so i wonder if you've had any experiences around that i'd be interested to know and i'd also be interested to know about your experience with this mars saturn cycle if you think about it relative to your own life um since it started uh first of april actually 2020 so drop your thoughts and questions and messages underneath this video i'd love to hear how you're all going and i'll be back soon we've got a lunar eclipse coming up in uh, taurus we've got the solar eclipse in december you know there's um a still a very heavy dose of uh, the scorpion energy with all these planets in scorpio uh, wondering how you're all feeling with those Personally, I've been um, having, I've got transiting Pluto in my 12th, which I think I've mentioned to you guys before, and it's uh, it's getting pretty close to my ascendance. So Pluto in the 12th house is one of the most difficult places to have Pluto, whether it's naturally or whether it's by transit. Um, <clears throat> and there's, I could talk about this for hours, but simply put, it brings up all the content from from the unconscious components within us and that has to do with this life and any other life we've ever lived as well so what i've noticed the last probably four weeks i would say i've been having i mean i've always been a person um, who's very active in my dream world right my, my dream state um i've had you know i've been journaling dreams for years and so on and so forth but the last few weeks i've had a dream of pretty much every single person that I've connected with in my life, <clears throat> however long or brief that experience was. And I'm seeing all these different um, emotions and expressions and facets of the story and the experience I had with each individual. And it's it's been so freaking intense. It's I, f I feel like I haven't really slept properly for the last month because of my the unconscious uh, components within me are just so amplified with this Pluto energy at the moment. So um, this is just, uh, for me, it's it's it just adds a greater level of intensity with this uh, Mars in Scorpio and Mercury in Scorpio and the, you know, the Scorpio new moon. And oh, it's, um, it can be pretty exhausting. It's very, very intense energy and so, it's uh, sometimes I feel like I'm just living in this parallel universe, you know, I'm, I'm just experiencing all these emotions and energies and things that I can't even really describe actually. And then on the other hand, I'm, I'm observing and noticing this 3d reality and everything that's going on there. It's, it's a, it's a very, very weird feeling. And I think this, for me, this is just the preparation of Pluto finishing because it's closing everything and finishing everything in my 12th house before it reaches my ascendant, which is going to be the ultimate rebirth. And I really can't wait for that. But some of you might be having Pluto in the 12th house as a transit. So if you are, you know, let me know of your experiences and thoughts. I'd love to hear about them. I'm always fascinated with Pluto in the 12th house because it is the, um, 
it is the most difficult place for Pluto, as a matter of fact. So it's it's incredibly powerful because you are essentially clearing everything. You know, it's you are closing um, such a massive evolutionary cycle because when Pluto gets to the ascendant, it's the ultimate rebirth of a complete brand new evolutionary cycle, you know, just to put it very simply. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, see you soon for the lunar eclipse in Taurus. Much love, take care and um, yeah, many blessings. Bye.